come on, mate. Come on, buddy. Diesel, come on, buddy. Good boy. Good boy, Diesel. Hello, Jazzy boy. Hello, beautiful. What a good boy you are. What a good boy. Hello. <laughs> Nearly bowled me over. Nearly bowled me over. Come on. Hello, Diesel. Good boy. <laughs> Chopper, what do you think you're going to do, buddy? It's like I'm a bird chaser for five minutes.
ici. Let's go. Good boy. 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 Good Cool, so I want to talk to you guys a little bit today I was just, about there's Lily telling Joey. Pack dynamic. <laughs> Good example right here. Look at them having a standoff, yeah, the two of them. And, and Joey's not a pushover either. No way. But neither is Lily. Nah, Lily's purely using her size there and just basically shadowing Joey. <laughs> Literally shadowing out the sun with her huge. <laughs> and uh, Joey respected it. Uh, but yeah, Joey's not a pushover. The shepherds hassle Joey all the time. You saw Shadow just hassling Joey. She takes nothing from no one. Uh, but yeah, Lily commands a little bit more respect. Um, so we're going to talk about pack dynamics today. There so what, why, yeah. There's been a significant shift since the last time we spoke about our pack and the rank structure and... Um, it's very normal to have this shift when you've got so many young dogs. You, we've got, you know, the three shepherds, the two staffies, the two brothers. Um, we've got Barney, all in a similar age category, which so is just, so, young. So we've got three, two, two, and one. So that's eight that are all approximately 12 to 14 months old. Correct, between, between um, 12 and 18 months and... Well, if we were to say that, then Rover's in that mix. That's what I mean. Uh, he's only one. That's right, um, there, there are a lot of dogs in that same category mm. and the same category is a maturity ca uh, category. So they're not quite, just watch this one here. So this is this is one guy that I want to talk about. Just keep watching him when uh, Mr. Red comes around. He might do it on the wrong side now, but I'll have to zoom in. Oh, oh, he, he had a big uh, snap. And then um, showing showing teeth. I might be so. able to zoom in, and they'll be able to see. I saw the snarl, yeah. you know. The one before was a lot more direct. He actually had a snap at it. Um, anyway, with this many dogs going from puppy to adolescent, and now some of them going into adulthood, there is always going to be these dynamic shifts and their natural hierarchy will eventually take place so firstly this is going to be a long video it's going to be a big one yeah <laughs> like there's, there's been there's so that many much individual. change there's that much um shift in in the personality development in you know where they think they belong versus where the pack puts them um there's a there's a lot going on and the first dog that I want to talk about is Banjo. 
Now, he he is the brother of the two of the trio. He's a lot bigger than the girls, uh, and he is displaying a lot more uh, forceful behaviour when playing. And some of his play turns serious very quickly, and it has done for the last couple of weeks. So he's getting to a point now where he's saying, I'm not a puppy anymore. Don't treat me like a puppy. Um, give me a bit of respect. And if the dogs aren't doing it, then he's starting to push his weight around a little bit, which is very natural for his age. Uh, I did start to see it when he was around 10 months old, when um, he went through that first little maturity leap and we went back to formal training for a week or so. Did you hear that? I think it was a snort. I thought it was a fluff. <laughs> I was like, it was loud. It was shadow, I'm pretty sure it was a snort, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, that solved that particular development leap. And then now he's reaching uh, maturity uh, or, or adulthood. And so it's starting to creep its head again. So. We're having, to, we're having to watch him during this phase because he is a big dog and he's starting to, uh, his play is starting to turn a little bit serious. Very, very normal. If, if I would categorize him in the wild, in a pack, uh, he would likely reach some very high ranks and it's, and it's likely that he'll do the same here in the next couple of years. Uh, but we just have to make sure that when he does it, it, it happens in a way that uh, is not going to be, you know, all out war with any of the dogs or it's not going to be, you know, a, a, a big incident. It needs to be earned bit by bit. So, and... so yeah, just on that, I'll just mm. make an observation because um, you can then talk about mm. it and just for everyone at home. So he does display what you're talking about with that rank... Um, that is only one above him. Well, no, it's it's his. Um, uh, yeah. So what, I, what I'm what I'm saying there is, I I think I know what you're talking about. He's not trying to attack the top ranks yet. No. So he definitely shows full respect Correct. to Fredo, Roscoe, um, yeah. uh, Lily. You know, yeah. Chance, like that kind of respect. But um, where he shows his frustration. Um, like you did kind of just touch on is his peers. Yeah. So where he feels like I am above you. That's right. Um, and so, so it's all, I want it's you all to the positions around him. Not, respect not, me like I respect, you know, right. Lily and Chance and Fredo and Roscoe. Yes. Yeah, so but they're like, I don't respect yeah, you like that. <laughs> you're my puppy mate. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so um, he's getting very frustrated. Uh, yeah, he's getting he's getting a little frustrated with uh, some of his similar aged dogs in the pack, and so when he's sort of he's almost like he's getting offended that yeah. they're still classing him as, as right. their class. Because I just think that it's a good way of understanding, yeah. you know. Because when I see it. Um, I can see why he does it with those certain, and it is only those dogs. Because he you did know. it with his sisters a couple of months ago. He used to play with his sisters a lot, and Matilda used to be the boss of the three. Mm. And then he got much bigger, and then I remember seeing one time he did have a play wrestle with her, and she kept playing. And then he uh, put her on her back, sat on her chest, and full teeth snarled. And then just got up and sat down, and she left him alone after that. And I went, "Oh, that was different." Uh, he did it. He did it to both of them at one point, and then now they both respected him. Uh, and now with his other, uh, what were equal peers in that age group, he's starting to ask for that same respect, and they're like, yeah. oh, no, we play," it, you know. And then, but he's getting a bit serious because he saying, used no, to no, have fun with. You know, like the likes of Barney and um, you know Tank and Chopper. Yeah. But now they are his target. His yes. folk. His focus. Yeah. You know. So he, he is. His agenda now is to make sure they recognise he outranks them. Yeah. And that's that's the problem. So he no longer wants to go in and play their game. He wants to go in and show them I'm bigger than you. Mm. Uh, which is a natural development, and it, you know. As a, for a dog like Banjo, like I said before, he 
he would be a very high ranking pack in the wild, a pack member in the wild. So it's natural for him to take on that demeanor um, in this environment. Now this is a very unique environment as well. There's, there's uh, 19 dogs here that uh, are all of similar age. 20. There's, there's a 20 dogs here that yeah. are all of a similar age or um, there's only a couple that are in the, in the older bracket. And it, it is very much like uh, wild pack dynamics. It's a large pack. So, twen so there's 20 dogs in this pack and pretty much, because we're talking about nine of them, so almost mm. half that pack are, young. are his age, you know, yeah. that, that 12 and to 14 months old. Yeah, so it's absolutely no surprise that he's started to go, hang on, I don't belong in this class. Yeah. Um, and so he's taking it out on his classmates and going, no, no, I'm not part of this <laughs> class anymore. You know, I'm stepping up uh, away from this. And it's natural progression. It, re it really is. But the way that he's doing it is a little forceful. And so I need to manage that, which is yeah. which is why we've had a lot of comments on where's Banjo, what's Banjo doing? Um, and this is the reason why. So he has been uh, undergoing some more formal training purely just to manage this behavior. And uh, so he is taking on the similar attitude that Shadow did when she went through the training, where she knew that if I was gonna get involved in this game, I'm gonna get uh, in trouble, so I'm just gonna withdraw. And that's where Banjo start, has started to do. So you'll notice behavior. that he doesn't do it in this setting, or maybe uh, on the bushwalks, but it is more just like Shadow. It's those- The intense stuff where yeah, he knows- Yeah, where he knows he's not gonna- <laughs> Because he's not playing the game anymore, he's playing the dog. Yeah. So he, what, when he was, he doesn't, he doesn't want to do the wrong thing. No. I think so. Just for everyone he's at home, he like back, he is, is he's a beautiful dog, yeah. and he does want to do the right thing. And just like Shadow went through the same stage, and all of the dogs' chance, he went through. He, well, he's only just coming out now, where he wants to be more involved. Yeah, he's, he's but he would sit out because he didn't trust himself. Exactly, and not only that, um, it takes a lot of. It takes a lot of occurrences or situations where he puts himself in them and he does the wrong thing and the right thing and for me to identify to him that was wrong or that was right. For him to identify why the focus is on him. So for him, in his mind, he's just naturally saying, I'm not a part of this group anymore, I'm gonna be in the high ranking group, but the way that he's doing it is what I'm focusing on and it takes a lot of uh, that trial and error in his mind to identify, okay, what is it exactly that I'm doing wrong? It's a really slow, it's a um, slow one, yeah. training thing. So it's like not it's... like you can just take him off for an hour and do a session <laughs> because performing, he's performing yeah. very, very well. But it's when he's in the environment where there is no formal setting and his, his interaction with the other dogs and his agenda is, hey, give me that respect. They're saying, no, no, we're playing. Chance, stay out of that. Um, where naturally his, his personality is taking over uh, that, that playful encounter. And so so that's a, lo where... a lot of people have asked where he is and you know it's it is a long explanation um he's he is here he's fine yeah there's nothing wrong with but him. Mo a lot of the time he is just um sitting back and um you know he just doesn't want to do the wrong thing yeah. there um, has been a couple of times where we've had to uh, sit him out of a few exercises yeah just because we know it's going to be too difficult for him um, and that was early on when we identified, okay, we need to do something about this. Um, but, you know, he, he is he is here, there's nothing wrong with him. He's uh, doing very well in his training and I just like to keep him Like he's very a lot responsive. Closer. Yeah, super responsive. Super responsive. He, so like I just they start were trained managing him that way. Since with, they were really, like, yeah. how old? So I don't, I don't give him the freedom to just run off and do whatever you want anymore all day. I'm telling him to do something. I'm telling him to come to me. I'm telling him to heal. I'm telling him to drop. And so I'm constantly working him so that I can keep him out of that, okay, who's next on my uh, you know, radar to let them know I'm not in this class anymore, you know? And there's a lot of them. There's, there's like you said, there's, there's eight of them. 
Um, yeah. Because he's the ninth. So he doesn't want to be included in the ninth. He wants his own class <laughs> of one. He has no problem with the, the top uh, tier. Yeah, it does not challenge them no at way. all. No way. He gives them total yeah. respect, licks For their the face. Moment. Yeah. For the moment. So that'll probably give be it, another. Give it nine months and I think he'll start having a similar thing. Like I said, he's a big, strong dog, and I think he will command some, some rank in the pack. Um, but time will tell. He's still, he's still uh, a young dog in comparison to Fredo and Lily and, um, you know, Roscoe. Uh, they, they are the, the, you know, the top tier, along with Tilly. Um, and so just it won't be a surprise to me if, if you know, six to twelve months from now we have a similar discussion, and he's trying to pick some one of those for off their perch. Mm. Um. So before we go on to the, next dog. the other yeah. pack members, <laughs> um, just I you know, not sure how yeah, to say it. To. Like it's not like it's a reminder, but um. Like it does need to be noted, I guess, in these comp like regularly in these conversations, yeah. um, that like you say, this is an unusual situation. Like, not only are there twenty dogs living together, pretty much free range. Yeah. Like, you know, yep, sure, chance, you know, sleeps separately at night, and so is Diesel. Yeah. Um, but everybody else, and and all the rest of the time, even Chance now, which is going to be another part yeah. of this video, yeah. how that's affecting everybody with him having such free time. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is that this is a very big pack living together. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we do everything together, you know. It's not like... Um, you know, we there go. There you go. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. It's not like we go to work every day and, you know, they get crated or yeah. um, separated. Yeah. Um, you know, they. There you are... go. Good boy. They are growing up in this large pack, you know, together. Good boy. Good boy. It's just, I guess, you know, smaller packs. Um, you know, where, you know, a lot of people, you know, I grew up with two or three dogs yeah. all my life, you know, when I was a kid. And there's definitely dynamics going down and there's shifts. And, uh, and, and, but usually the dynamics aren't as complex. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm trying to make the point of, yeah. you know, that, um, and, you know, clearly having so many dogs of your own age is... It's, it's, it's a challenge for it's those dogs in itself. Normal and no surprise that those dogs of a similar age are going to naturally miss it. I think that um, it was Miss Red Annoying Tank. Miss Red. She was in over there. Yeah, she was. She just ran. She just leapt. Oh, and, she ran, yeah. She? But I think that um, somebody. I do think that that was a bit of a. Unless they're, are they all just um, I was gonna, I was say, resource guarding this like dug hole? Well, I was going to say the black <laughs> tank on that hole. Yeah, so it was towards Miss Red, but um, the same situation as as, as yeah, you were Banjo pointing out before. Banjo with Miss Red. Uh, what the go is with these yeah, holes? They're land grabbing. <laughs> this is my patch of land. Everybody stay clear. Uh, um... <laughs> Yeah, so, and you can see there the clear, you know, understanding of where Miss Red sits in the rank. <laughs> no way. You know what I mean? <laughs> like she's, and, and, but that's, that's that natural hierarchy. Yeah. You know, then you've got the two that are towards the top of that group, um, telling her off. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and so naturally, there will start to be a divide between that one class and they'll have their own pecking order. So t oh, t tank, tank is an interesting one. Oh, Fred, Freddie's just doing a big big zoomy because he just had a good play with uh, Roscoe. Yeah, Roscoe will ambush him on the way back. Let's watch Chop there. Chop up. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Not your fight. 
And when we say fight, when we're saying play fight. <laughs> um, so, just quickly on that, because you've just referenced, you know, Tank and um, Banjo being at the top of that. Um, well, I just said yeah, as a class, like the top, if you're going to divide it into top and bottom. Mm. Yeah, but he's not number two. That's okay. what you mean. Is that yeah. what you were going to say? Or did you want me to elaborate on it? Maybe, yeah, no, I was going to say, did you want to elaborate on that? Because is there an example of a dog that is possibly similar to Banjo in that he's kind of up there in that in that middle rank? <laughs> Definitely. No, no, but, um, oh, okay, so you've probably got another one. But in my mind, I'm, I'm genuinely asking yeah, the question I'm, I'm of, is there another one like Banjo? I know you're thinking of Barney. <laughs> but he's not the example. So he's another story, but yeah. which we will get to. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's what um, I mean. We're not even past the first. Oh, uh, thing! I'm looking at my phone, and it's like 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, I'm saying, is there another dog like Banjo, um, who is like kind of a, a, on the upper end of that middle rank, but doesn't feel like they need to push their weight around? Like they're more, they're not frustrated or, do you know what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, I do. Maybe there's not. Maybe this is the only. I cause, do. Because Barney obviously shows the same yeah. behaviours as Banjo. Yeah, so Barney definitely wants to be, but he's gone straight for the, <laughs> for the cool kids. Yeah, he, you know, he, he totally. He hasn't bothered with his own peers. But he does not care for, um, you know, Banjo, Matilda, no. Rosie, Tank no. Chopper. He's no, going he's for chance. For yeah. Oh, he he actually that's his number one. Chance, <laughs> yeah. Um, he has yeah. he has his tussles with Roscoe, but he quite loves Roscoe. He does. He, he loves like him a them. lot. Yeah, you he know, doesn't like the tussles, but he's but he's trying to he's trying to get Roscoe to give up his rank without a fight. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do. like just love him yeah. over. But chance he really does not like. He I've. He, he's um but it's, it's funny because it's like a it's like a respect he wants he idolizes the position that's what it is yeah you know, it's a it's an odd one it is uh, funny isn't it because barney like he's you know, he's, you know what it's like oh too we haven't talked yeah, about you you know what it's like I've, it's until barney. says i'm the queen just that's yeah, the end of the story yeah, <laughs> Good I, I, I liken Barney to, um, you might want to edit this out. Oh, Chewie. Look at this beautiful girl. She says, I'm the original. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just find yeah, it interesting. You might, you might want to edit this out. <laughs> Here, the difference, um, I'm not sure like what your thoughts are. But Barney's a very interesting one because the way he behaves around Roscoe versus the way he behaves around Chance is very different. Oh yeah, he doesn't take it. He knows that Roscoe is, uh, you know, all bark as far as the dogs go now because he's not allowed to behave the way that he used to behave. Mm. But he also knows that the same rules apply for Chance Chance has got a little wild streak. He's got a little, I'll get you down the locker room, mate, and we'll have this chat. Yeah. You know? Like, I want none of that. Uh, but, he, but he still grumbles yeah, at him. Yeah. Like he, he's, yeah. look at him. He wants to be, he's such a brave boy, I gotta say. He's, he is, he's a man. very brave dog. Um, he, whenever the kids come out, if I come out, he really does take a protective role. Like, as much as we might have a little giggle, yeah. you know, at him, he honestly does. He puts, him, he puts himself in between, yeah. and he always is having a grumble at chance, like, as yeah. in, you know, if I'm we're, watching if you. We're being, if we're being honest and fair to Barney, the only reason why we have this, you know, him wanting to climb the ranks and get away from, you know, that, that group because he wears a nappy inside and with the nappy on it it has that stigma attached to that you're a baby but it's not it's nothing to do with that you know so sorry 
So who who's attaching that stigma to him? Everyone who sees him in a nappy. What, the dogs? No. Oh, people. People. The whole thing about us, you know. Oh, you think that we're doing that? Yeah, he is a tough-as-nails dog. Barney, Barney right. is like, you can't take anything away from him. He... Oh, no, I, I honestly, you're just, um, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see it like that because he wears a, a, a nappy. Like, no, I, I can just see that he's, um, the way that he tries to handle those relationships is juvenile, you know, like more juvenile. Oh, yeah. You but know that's that. He is. You know, so I just, I see him as baby Barney. That's what you I know. Mean. Oh, you think it's because he was wearing that? Yeah. I don't think so. I just think that he his little personality is. Um, he tries to be the the big tough guy, but he's. But you see, you're disagreeing with me. Look at the way he's playing. He's chest on chest, pinning. Him. Yes, I know, but it's still. I still feel like. Um, he doesn't play on his back. Mm. There's no, there's no uh, swap sides with Barney. He's always been, you know, strong. Maybe it's just his. He for me, um, he has a very sweet soft side. Yeah, he has a he has a very sweet. I think he's. I think he said it once, which totally makes perfect sense for him. He has the eternal puppy face. Yeah, but he also, um, I just, I see the way he plays with Cutie Pie and, you know, it's very much like, boxer. it's very much like Roscoe. He's a boxer. You know, that's what they do. Boxers are, oh, you know, okay. very, very capable of adjusting their play styles to suit the mm. person they're playing with. No, it's his personality. It's different to Hope and it's different to Maple. Well, Hope is a totally different case altogether. Yeah. Anyway, so you, uh, should we just go straight into Barney? Well, More we haven't smart. even identified, you, you, you've been, the original question was not about Barney, but we just went down a, a tangent. A rabbit hole. Yeah. I should probably stop, because I don't want to lose videos yeah, when yeah. they're so long, so yeah. hang on. So, I just, is that something I need to film? Rover and Chance, they're good? Oh, I could be with Rover, yeah. Yeah, so that, back to the original, to me saying, yeah. is there a dog that, um, is there a dog? If there isn't, we'll just skip over that. Uh, yeah, I think that there is. You're talking about a dog that is on the top half of that group of nine that doesn't throw their weight around. Yeah. Yeah, that's Maggie. Right, but she's older. But are you, well, you're not. It's not about that's, age. That's that's the perfect example of. This. She is older, but she's got nothing to prove. She's only older by not much, like yeah, eight she's, months. She's just two. That's what I mean. Like she's not older by much, but mm. it's enough for her to go. Ah, I'm I'm a little bit above you guys, but I don't need to prove it. Right. You know what I mean? That's what you're talking As about. As in she doesn't go round to that younger no. lot telling them, Correct. respect me. Yeah. Because she is very happy to play with them. She is very happy to play the the victim in their game. She's very happy to play, oh, yeah, you beat me, well done, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But Barney and Banjo would never play the, oh, yeah, you won, okay, my turn, never. Right, right. They would always be like, oh, you're winning? No, I'm winning, and then it escalates. <laughs> Yeah. You know? Okay, cool. So, but with Maggie, um, she some dogs do peeve her off. Oh, yeah. She's quite feisty. She's uh, she's got some <laughs> go about her. Yeah. yeah. So. I'll tell you exactly who that is. Who? Joey. Yeah. So, but there, but that is that not her that's the next the next rung above. That's okay. Another, that's a whole nother league. Oh goodness. That's going into reserve grade. You got junior leagues, minor leagues, and then you got reserve grade, and that's where these guys fit in. And you got pros, um, if you're going to put it into a sports reference. But yeah, Joey, Joey's older. She's a lot more mature. She's a tough as nails dog. She's a working dog. Um, but she's not in the same at, bracket at, as.
So Joey, see we're skipping over things, but just really quickly, Joey's an interesting one because she's not like a Freddo, Roscoe, Lily, you know, that top, top, yeah. top with like chance, but because she, she's, she's an original. But she's also a working dog. Yeah. Very different. So she doesn't want to start anything, but she just wants everybody to leave her alone. Yeah, she wants she... nothing to do with the rank structure and the dynamics and yeah. the politics. She wants nothing to do with it. Yeah. She just wants to do her thing, which is win at the game. That's it. Which is her work. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're you're the only leader in her mind. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, she's I'm the only one that has her respect. Not that there's any other leaders in the pack. Yeah, but no, no the difference but there's is no... The difference is, I'm the only one that has her respect. No one else has her respect. She don't care. Right, she, okay, sorry, that's they're, better. They're all like, you know, respect my position. She's like, don't care about your whole game. I'm over here. You, know <laughs> you mean, mean nothing to me. Yeah. <laughs> you and your game, go play it. I'm, I'm, I'm playing my game. Uh, yeah, she's, she's very independent. And then when they all try to interrupt her game, that's where she says, get out of my way. Just... Okay, so then back to Maggie. Yeah. Um, Maggie's found herself in her way a few times, in Joey's way. And, you know, Joey being... Because they had quite an altercation over Christmas. Another one recently. Uh, okay. Yeah, I saw it the other day. The um, one at Christmas, like I saw that one, and they don't make contact. Yeah, they did. Well, this one wasn't. They were just um, on their haunches, and there's a lot of noise, and they're just... You know, I'll okay. Tell you, I'll tell you why that's the case. Because mm. I've seen that before in some of the other dogs. Yeah, but Jerry's very fast, so she'll block any attack to her with an open mouth and her teeth. Mm. So Maggie couldn't get in on her. But the only time, the only time there was contact was when I yelled out no, and Joey retreated. But that's turning her back to Maggie, and that's when Maggie lunged in and grabbed oh, Joey back. Maggie can't hear you. Maggie can't hear me, so she didn't hear the no. Uh, but I figured out why they have that issue is because the three shepherds, Banjo, Rosie, Matilda, all oh, and Shadow, all love chasing Joey. And that, that has turned Miss Violet and uh, Miss Red into chasing Joey. And it's also got Rover and Tank and Chop into chasing Joey. Because it's like, oh, this is this game. We all just chase Joey. Joey just wants to chase me on the bike. She doesn't want to do anything else. So now she's got nine or 10 other dogs all interrupting her game. And so she's just like, get out of my way. And if they start playing with her and jostling with her, she'll she'll nip them to say, get out of my way. Just like a working dog does when the uh, the sheep or the cattle don't move. You know, they give them a nip to say, start moving. So Maggie has accidentally found herself in Joey's path a couple of times. And Joey's given her a nip to say, get out of the way. Maggie's gone. Stuff you don't nip me, you know, and then just turn straight into full blown offense. Um, and then obviously, Joey turns around and goes, Oh, we're gonna make this more than it has to be, okay? And she never backs down. So they had a couple of standoffs. It started off with a couple of little ones, and Maggie, I could tell Maggie was so highly offended by it all that she couldn't let it go. You know, she was she was sitting there and huffing and like Joey had taken off after the bike and on the way back Maggie's still staunching up past Joey but Joey's not even looking at her, you know, just running around doing her thing. Yeah, so ever since then Maggie's never forgot what's what's been happening. Uh, so they've they've locked heads a couple of times and they had a big one at Christmas time and it was Joey guarding the cheese board. Yeah, so that that is Forces. So, um, whenever yeah. any, so just quickly on that, whenever anyone um, gets told off by me, um, the dogs that like follow up the telling off is obviously Roscoe. Which people might already know about, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But it's also Lily. Lily, very much so, yeah. 
Lily's a big, like, she really follows it up, then follows it up again, and follows yeah. it up again. Like, so did you understand that? Yeah. Tell me you understood it's it. Like, Repeat it to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like getting dressed down in front of, um, you know, three of your superiors. And so after the top yeah. boss has told you off, then the next top boss tells you off, and then the next top boss tells you off, and by the end of it, you're just sweeping floors. <laughs> Kind of. I mean, we have a we have a giggle about it because yeah. otherwise to, this... everyone just takes all this stuff too seriously, you know. Well, and I understand it is serious. Yeah, I get it. But... I get it. But we find it funny because we understand it. We know what they're doing. Um, we know that it's it's not going to be. <laughs> So this is this is Banjo's just testing the waters with Lily and Lily. He's saying so you're a naughty boy. Yeah, you're not even <laughs> here with that rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but th it's like is, it's like a sitcom, really. It totally is. Like if you no, no, you know what it's like? It's like Big Brother. Just put all these personalities <laughs> into a room and just see what happens. Because <laughs> like a pressure cooker. You know, like we show um all the happy and it is, and it's happy all the time like it isn't it's not depressing or anything like that but i do find that this part of it like it is drama yeah, it totally isn't it is. yeah so you've got like all totally the is. all the happy you know swimming and diving and chasing after the bike where they're just focused on the fun but then, you got the politics. But then there's all this drama yeah. you know like friendships falling out and yeah. you know oh goodness Family, you know, you got the siblings. Family, siblings, you know. you know. I don't like you today. Yeah. You know, I'm going through my own thing here. and yeah. But um, then you've got the Lord of the Flies, where <laughs> like if one's getting picked on, I was like, yeah, let's all pick on them. And then there's like, stop picking on me. You know, there's lots. There's lots of stuff that goes on. Um, and then just throw like a Miss Violet in there. Oh. You know? She sure does. Anyway, what were we? Where were we on with that one? I can't really remember. Uh, Maggie and Joey. Maggie's got some real gumption to her. I gotta zoom in. Hang on. Oh, everything's fine. Yeah, Maggie's got some real gumption to her. She's not a pushover. I think that's where we were going over that one. Yeah. So just recap, Maggie is not looking to... Um, no agenda. Like knock anyone, you know, or, or, you know, have a certain place in the pack or anything like that. She's very playful, but she does have a bit of a running beef with Joey. Um... They're two very different personalities. Yeah. Joey's a very serious personality, um, and Maggie is the total opposite to that. <laughs> very happy go lucky. You know, yeah. But she gets very offended when very seriousness offended. is brought into her. And holds and, that uh, offense for her. Doesn't let it go easy. No. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see when um, Joey goes past, Joey doesn't even acknowledge her, and you'll see Maggie go. <sighs> she goes past you know what I mean <laughs> just ready just in case he looks she looks at me you know like, but even even saying. that even that running past and purposefully not looking at me yeah it makes her furious yeah why don't, you, why don't you acknowledge me I'm angry with you yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um, it's pretty funny anyway so that's one of the 75,000 dynamics <laughs> um, I'll tell you what's an interesting one and within the same groups right mm. Tank and Chopper, I believe, would be in a similar category where they are naturally at the top half of that group. However, the two Shepherd sisters, Matilda and Rosie, they would be at the bottom of that group along with Miss Red and Miss Violet. But 
they push Tank and Chopper around. It's a, it's a flipped head dynamic there. It's a, it's a strange one. But they only do it when... Um, Would that, though, have something to do with... Um, because you know, obviously there's lots of things that play a part. You know, you've got, you know, age. Um, that's one thing, personality, male, female. Um, but, mm. like, um, Matilda and Rosie have been here a very long time. Even though they're only young, mm. they've been here since they were born. Yeah. So um, it's a lot longer than a lot of the other dogs. The only dogs that have been here longer is Tilly, Joey, Cutie Pie, and Freddo. That is it. Yeah. Everyone else has come after uh, the shepherds. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So surely that has something to do with the reason why they feel they're, a, you know, with the Tank and Chopper thing. Tank and Chopper have only been here for six months. Tank and Chopper are relatively new. I get that. But why they take offence to Tank and Chopper is is the question you know what i mean like because they'll only do it when they're isolated as in tank or chopper is by themselves and these two girls are together they won't do it they won't do it one-on-one -on -one with one or the other of the others um, but, but even that in itself is is a that, that's even different behaviour though with all the other dogs wow, when they're by what, themselves, when I mean. they're in a group. Well, this is now we're going within the pack dynamic. You've got the family dynamic and you've got the litter syndrome uh, dynamic going on. Um, well, litter mate yeah, it's, dynamic. It's a, you know, it's, whether... a, it's a very complex scenario. Uh, anyway, I just thought that one was an inter interesting one because... They don't hold much rank, these two, Matilda and Rosie, uh, but they do. And the, and the other thing is, the, I suppose the other thing about it is credit to, and this might be more along the lines of the Maggie thing, credit to Tank and Chopper. Whenever Rosie and Matilda charge them, Tank and Chopper just stand there, look at them and go, what are you doing? Why, why did you just charge me like that? Like they, mm. don't, they don't enter into any battle. Mm. They're just like, what are you that for? Mm. Keep, keep doing what they were doing. And I think that annoys them as well. Just like it annoys Maggie when Joey doesn't acknowledge her. They're, they're like, oh, how come he didn't run away? Or how come he didn't, mm. you know? Anyway, so should we break away from that category and go up a couple of ranks? Uh, well... Do you want to talk about some different dynamics? Yeah. So about hope. Should we talk about hope? Yeah, so um So overall hope is affecting the pack just in her confidence building, which yeah. is such a awesome thing. The that fact that she's growing in confidence is fantastic because that's her journey. That's what that's what and, we And we're seeing more and more of her true personality coming out because she is relaxing. Mm -hmm. You know, but obviously, like we know that even with the daycare pack. Just watch this. If if while you're on the while you're filming me, mm. there were, all three of them were there before, mm. and Matilda used to be the ringleader here. But um, there were all three, and then now. Uh, Matilda, Matilda pulled away. She she got out of there because she was like, oh, I don't want to play this. But then Banjo and Rosie stuck around. But then Banjo got serious and pinned Rosie. Um, but this was what I was talking about, where as soon as there's any kind of seriousness here, and this is look at this dynamic here with Rosie and Matilda. But Rosie's taking the rank off Matilda. Rosie, Rosie doesn't care about the Matilda thing. 
it before, Matilda's backed down a few times when Rosie and her had that bit of a standoff. But anyway. Uh, hope. We're talking about hope. Yeah, so um, she's growing in confidence. We're seeing so. more of her true personality, out of a shell, but also breed dog. traits, you know, of being, being a boxer, mm -hmm. you know, which is a great thing to see. Yeah. So all of that is positive. Um, but well, I think what I was saying was like the daycare pack, um, I think we've mentioned it a few times, you know, dog comes in, new dog to the daycare, um, you know, first day, second day, third day, we don't see a true representation of their personality or behavior. Yeah. Once they relax and Banjo. settle. Oh boy. Um, you know, some, so the behavior um, comes out uh, in bucket loads, but it's yeah. not just positive. It can be, you know, some more negative behaviors. Yeah, which she's starting to show. She is, I've I, mentioned it before. I did um, take a clip. So they will see this on the video, and okay. now we're talking about it later in the video. Nipping one of the dogs? Yeah, at the gate. Yeah. So she's there nipping the heels of one of the German Shepherd. Uh, it was like Matilda or Rosie. Yeah. So, so people will be able to see that that is probably one of her more common um, behaviours that is emerging. It's a really yeah, normal... The, the, the nips are starting to become quite boxer hard thing. too. Um, I, I yeah, to the point where, just for example, so everyone understands, winks. like a dog like Freddo has retaliated yeah. towards Hope yeah. um, and had a good go at her because it's her nips bloke. hurt. Yeah, I've seen uh, her do it a couple of times and she did it to the shepherd girl. She, she nips um, in the rear quarter and in the hind hock. And she does that because that's her skill, that's her, that's her strength. She's very fast, she can get in and out very quickly. The dogs can't turn around and get within striking range of her to retaliate. It's not like a proper, like, sink my teeth in bite. Oh, no, no, no. You know, we're not talking about that. You know, it doesn't do any damage or anything like that. It is a nip, um, you know, however, it's a good pinch that um, is obviously hurting some of the dogs. Like you can see in the video that the, the shepherds don't even turn around, you know, at that point. Um, but I just wanted, I don't want people to be, you know, intensely concerned about, you know, hope, you know, hope's behavior. Like but I think uh, you were, you were the comparison. It before and, but you didn't finish it, was the fact that. We expect this from dogs that are shy or yes. not confident. As soon as they're confident, this behavior is like a textbook tick in the box. Yeah. This happens. Yeah. We see it with all the daycare dogs. Yep. Um, we knew it was going to happen. It honestly, it honestly happening. is textbook. Like yeah. it's just the. It's it's. You don't even raise an eyelid. No, it's like oh, she's at that stage. Yeah. Okay, so you know, and she's got to, in my opinion, she's got to get. A touch more she's got to come out of her shell a bit more um, and then we start to focus on that behavior uh, so you're pulling her up for it now yeah, but, but it's she, but she the problem with it's got to be a balance with, yeah the problem with dealing with that behavior with hope is she's already got comes from a, a an abusive past so for her Saying no to her carries so much more weight than any of the other dogs. So it's not just the letters N-O, just no. for everyone, because people do get um, caught up in, we'll just use another word, I've heard it many, many times. It's, it's you can not, say bananas, it's your demeanour yeah, of marking the behaviour. That's right. It's, it's a, it's you know, her understanding, her comprehension of that that was... She did something and, wrong. That's right. She did um, something wrong and now I'm correcting her. So it wouldn't matter so, what word you used, it it's matter. not that. The focus, it's the it's focus her feeling her. of yeah focuses on her, and she knows that oh that I didn't do the right thing, yeah. um, so yeah. you just have to do a balance of. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you mark the behaviour, like let's say we mark the behaviour there at the gate, yeah, she would have just pulled back all together and wouldn't have joined in here. She would just sit off on the side and just go, I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And also, um, you know, in her situation, I, I'm interested in your thoughts on this, but this is, this is very much just hope, you know, in isolation. But she gets told off or the, the behaviour is marked and corrected by the dogs. Some of them, yeah. Um, so, but what I'm trying to say is she doesn't take as much offence to that. She, she is, un, is comprehending the correction, you know, but... She's only comprehending the correction from the dogs that take real offence to it. So that's like Freddo. Uh, who else has happened to her? Been, oh, there's, there's a few. One. I think Lily. Yeah, there's been a, there's been another couple that have done it to her. It's... Um, but the dogs that are not really that confident and they're in that that younger bracket, they don't try and turn around and you know assert the fact that hey, you shouldn't be doing that to me like the older dogs do. They try to turn around and and you know tell her leave me alone. But by that stage, she's already jumped back two feet and they're nowhere close to her. Mm. So they don't get to. She that's her game. That's what I'm saying. That she's playing to her strength there by getting in and getting out fast. Um, but I, I have a bit of a joke about it and think that you know she's been brought under under the wing of um, Tilly. That was her game. Little hawk, <laughs> little hawk fighting. <laughs> but I think I'm at the point I was trying to. Now, if if a if a juicy enough hawk goes past, <laughs> she'll just do a little. Oh, I'd like to get that. Doesn't she? The, the, she yeah, not yeah. making contact. But no, it... just like this far away. She just looks at it and goes. Yeah, she does. <laughs> like I, I can just totally eat that right now. Like yeah, and uh, she only takes it out on the stationary tires now. Yeah. But um, but sorry, I think the point I was trying to make with hope. Mm -hmm is that the balance when we talk about where we correct and where we don't with hope because we are trying to build her confidence right and it's her confidence in humans it's very very important you know she has a lot of confidence with the dogs yeah but and that was the thing when she first got here you know she had yeah. no no trust or confidence That's what in humans bring her out yeah yeah so the dogs have always hel always helped hope in her development mm -hmm. and I feel like this is just another part of that where the dogs are you know helping out in some of her you know um, curbing of behavior yeah you know because it can't always be you or I we are trying to get her to trust us mm. and to build her confidence in humans um, so I think that the pack are, you know, helping her again in that respect. Um, but she's a very unique case, mm. you know, like on that one. She is. She, she's a very unique case. She falls in her own basket altogether. Um, <clears throat> It's, and it's also an interesting point, like a dog like Hope, um, she is a similar thing in the sense of, you know, some of the other dogs like um, Diesel, Rover, you know, they're not like a Chance or a Freddo or um, a Roscoe or a Nevea or a Shadow where they have to go through intensive training to even be allowed to be um, in amongst the yeah. dogs. So what happens is with dogs like Hope and Diesel and Rover is that it's a much slower training. Um, like, it's not as formal. Because we, we, you guide them whilst they're in this setting yeah. as opposed to like Freddo, he couldn't, he couldn't come into this yeah. until he, perf he passed all the tests on the other side of the gate, you yeah. know, for months. Yeah, so the performance is much higher for those dogs having gone oh, through the look. Look at Diesel on his back. It misread. It's the first time we've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl, Miss Red. Miss Ready Red.
two little staffies. <laughs> They're actually an interesting uh, dynamic, the two of them together. Yeah. Because there's not really, they don't have the same as the German Shepherds together, do they? Like, it's not like they're trying to be above each other. No. Like, they've they're never, not, they're they've never done anyone. that. No. They're just happy to... <laughs> they're just... They seriously make me laugh. I love them so much. Do you know what phrase I always think about when I think about those two? What? I know, not trying to put them down at all, but I feel it's very fitting. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Okay, just, I'm not going to include that because they're not ignorant. Oh my goodness. They are not. They're as thick as two house bricks. No, they're not. I'm not including that, Luke. <laughs> that is not true. No, I'm they sorry. are not. They are just happy. That's right. They, they do not even acknowledge the politics. They're just like... <whistles> they're just living their life. They are just... I love that attitude. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. But don't be offended by it. That's just how it is. No, but don't think it's because they're, you know, not, like, I just don't think it's a thing that I want to get into. Okay. You don't have to. Anyway, starting again. <laughs> Miss Violet and Miss Red. They do not have the, that, in, what is it? Intelligence. Oh my goodness, would you stop it? Okay, Miss. So Miss Violet and Miss Red. Yeah. You know, they're very they're really interesting because they're litter mates. They are you know, litter mates. And, and they love each other to death. Yes, they honestly do not have a beef with each other no. ever. Like there's never any, you know, I'm above you, you're beneath me, like anything like that. They're very, they're such happy, they're happy. dogs. Yeah, they're just happy, they're content. <laughs> They'll run along next to each other and bark at each other. And, yeah. and when they're barking at each other, they're like, what are you running for? I'm like, don't know, but let's run. Woohoo, we're running together. Woohoo. Yeah. You know, it's like, like a, don't get me wrong, they have a good on wrestle, but, oh yeah, it's, but, but it's just for fun. It's, all fun yeah. it's not for any purpose or, yeah. you know. Yeah, I really hope that uh, that doesn't change for those two. Yeah, because they have a really, really sweet friendship, yeah. I do think. Yeah, they do. Um, so it's, it is very, it is lovely that they got to stay together, mm, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, little missy. Oh, what else you were talking about? Oh, 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 so beautiful. They're so beautiful. They couldn't be more different, though. They're very different. The yeah. two of them. Mm -hmm. um, Miss Violet is a lot more outgoing and yeah. um, and confident they're like opposites things. yeah and miss red is very untrusting with new things new people um it, it is it's quite strange isn't it yeah her behavior is very unusual um in this situation mm. isn't it mm -hmm. you know um and you know there's a few things that we've talked about in terms of you know could that explain it could this contribute you know what like i'll mention a few of them like we're not saying that any of these are the results yeah. of it but these are just things that we've said you know yeah. um like she was on steroids for a, a, a long time yeah. um because of her autoimmune disorder when she was a puppy and it's had an it had has had an effect on her her, her structure mm. um and like her, her body yeah. structure and her beef um she's chunky monkey isn't she yeah and and her personality um yeah it was different uh when she was a little puppy because mm. we did have we remember them she's the um, sweetest little miss red yeah. little baby, red, baby red um yeah. evie used to call her mm. and um so her personality did change over the time that she was on the medication um but it the didn't other completely thing... come back afterwards i felt mm. i felt like i felt like she definitely showed serious aggression we're like whoa what's going on here then we then we as we weaned her off the meds the the behaviour dropped away, but I feel like it it 
something lingered there. You know, mm. I feel like some of the behavior kind of lingered around, but she didn't know what to do with it. Mm. And that's where this non-confident aggression came from, which is an odd scenario. You know, mm. it's a strange one. Yeah. Yeah, it is an odd one for us. Because the other thing is that. Um, you know, some of her behaviour or her outbursts, we thought maybe, you know, it's hereditary, like with Shadow. Well, she does, she does display similar traits to what yeah. Shadow does. Shadow is very untrusting for people. The mouth licking, you know, that's a big... So, so just for everyone at home, the, um, the hereditary thing or the, you know, like parent to, Genetics. you know, um, is an interesting one that we have observed with some of um, the dogs, just purely because we know the parents, because we've trained yeah. them. And I'm not talking about just Shadow and Miss Red. There's several. Um, Conrad. Conrad with the German Shepherds. Yeah. And Molly, um, Molly um, with- Her litter. With her litter. Um, so there's been, a, there's been a couple come through. Yeah. So, um, you know, they're not bred for temperament, no. these puppies. Um, you know, especially in Shadow and Quite the opposite, isn't Mo it? Molly's case. They're accidental litters from dogs that have aggression. You know, when you think about like a dog, like we've got... Oh, where is, where is Freddy at this point? He'll be chewing us. Oh, there he is. <laughs> You know, okay, so, so Freddie's a good example of a dog that has just been bred for temperament. You know, yeah. he's a golden retriever and, um, you know, like it's a big one for them, their temperament. So, yeah. you know, it's generations and generations of um, picking out the ones that are, you know, uh, non-reactive, yeah. um, great with children, great with humans, great with other dogs, like all of these things, as well as, um, you know, health scores. It, it's yeah. not just that. It's, temperament is a really big thing. So then you've got, um, you know, accidental litters where the parents are aggressive yeah. um, and have or have, um, you know, but like in Conrad's case, um, you know, he's got aggressive traits but he's also got high anxiety mm. and but this is this is what i was going to say so you've got you've got dogs like shadow for example who has gone through some serious neglect and trauma and and you know while she's pregnant yeah uh, abandonment issues and so her stress levels in her body at that point would definitely be passed on mm. to her litter and you know it makes it would make permanent changes in their demeanor and personality and their, their outlook on, on everything. So uh, it, it's no surprise that they're sh showing or exhibiting similar behaviors. Uh, Just know, tiny, and we're talking about tiny little things, like, because overall, Miss Violet and Miss Red are so sweet and happy oh, yeah. you know like but we're just talking about little things that we can see like miss red she does the same thing as shadow you know lick lick lick, lick nip lick. <laughs> i'll give you five licks and one nip and you won't feel the nip in there because it was surrounded and you'll by be five you'll licks. be confused yeah you'll be confused about did she just nip me and then she'll start licking me again <laughs> i think she just nipped me a lick again <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it's odd though yeah, yeah. um and, you know, Shadow is very similar to Miss Red in the untrusting of new humans. Oh, yeah. Even though she just, she loves her humans. I, I went into... Um... But she's very un... She's, she's one of the... F she, she will definitely give you some oh. back off barks I if, went, if I she doesn't in, know I you. I went into the garage in my pyjamas and got something out of the fridge. And as I was walking back to the house in my pyjamas, she started full on barking at me. It's like Shadow, it's me. And she's like, I can see it's you, but you don't have your hat on. And I was like, hey, Shadow, wait, it's me. And she was like, oh, okay, okay. And then as I walk past, she growls again. It's like she can't convince herself that there's no. It's, and Miss Red is exactly yeah. the same. As soon as exactly. she gets in her mind, this is a this is a not normal or not something going on here. She can't forget it. Even when she, I go up and she sniffs me and I pat her and it's like, hang on. Yeah. We need to de-escalate here. 
Yeah. Just filming open. Should we, should we start filming. walking back while we've got a break in the rain? Whenever next available. <laughs> yeah. yeah, perfect. No worries at all. Go get a little. Okay, so. There are quite a few donut. Watch out, Roscoe's there. Oh, sorry. I thought it was going to be a poop. I was yeah, going to step no. in. Um, but a couple of dogs that we just want to mention in relation to um, affecting the pack, affecting changing the, the pack dynamics. dynamics. Yeah. Just recently. Yeah. Is Rover is one, and Chance is another one as well. And it's just the fact that Chance has. A lot more freedom now and is roaming around freely around the house uh, it's putting a lot of the dogs uh, so off and so just quickly the reason why he is um, even more so than he was at the end of last year so I just wanted to explain to everybody um, they might remember that we said you know where we're building this tiny home for chance in that pen Mm. Now that was about a week ago, mm -hmm. um, but straight after that, Diesel came on board. Yeah. And so we've had to stop that obviously just to go back to normal pack, um, you know, I don't know, what is it, our daily activities, yeah. just to make sure that Diesel, That's we're, right. it's, we may have to do it for another couple of weeks, I don't know, it's until we know that he's... Um, settled enough that um, you can get back on the tools yeah. in some kind of it, capacity. Exactly. So it's so it's thrown, a, it's thrown a halt on progress there. So so on that though, um, because Diesel came out, um, and Luke didn't want Chance to feel like he was on the same. Um, at the same point as Diesel coming, yeah. so Diesel, so Diesel went into Chance's room, and Luke wanted Chance to make Shadow. that graduation. Yeah. You know, so we felt like you know because he's just worked so hard, and he yeah. isn't he isn't on the same level as Diesel. So um, what we did when Diesel arrived, Diesel went into Chance's room, but we moved Chance into that back room that was once Lucy's maternity suite. It's got all human accommodation in there now because we had the family, yeah, um, a family of five there. staying in that back room. Over Christmas, yeah. But we put Chance in there anyway. Um, but what it means is that it's it's the same idea of him having his own home and pen because it is a part of the house he's or right next to the house. Closer, yeah. So he is um, being a part of morning, you know, with Wolfie and evening, like right up until bedtime. Yeah. Um, so that's why he's getting a lot more interaction, free time, and why it's yeah. affecting the pack now. Um, I just Correct. wanted to explain the, the situation that he's in. Yeah, because people situation. might go, oh, yeah, yeah but why, why is that? it changing right it's now? A, it's a change of housing location. So it's a really big change just in the last week, yeah. just so everyone understands that. Yeah. So Chance, that's one that's changing the, the dynamic of the pack. Um, the other one is Rover. Rover coming into the pack. Shadow! She's just gnawing uh, Tank's collar. Oh, right. You tell your daughters how to do that too, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Look at her. He's like, yeah, I was just removing his clothes. I'm it's, like, I know. What it's you're the doing. same look as I, I didn't eat the soup. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's definitely uh, just stuffed something out. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> so Rover. Yeah. On, so we'll, we'll go on the other hand, this is why Rover is affecting the pack, but then you, we can maybe go into more detail about um, what it looks like, what are the issues that we're facing with Chance being almost 24-7. Um, and so, so Rover, why is it such an issue with Rover coming in as opposed to other dogs? I don't know, Ro like Diesel. Yeah, so Rover, Rover's coming into the pack and relaxing very quickly. <laughs> so Rover's coming in and just going, I love this. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to live here. Make it most of it. Yeah. He's like, I'm moving in. Yeah. You know, and all the and all the other dogs. So that's the attitude that's being received. Correct. We can see it. Yeah, absolutely. But the dogs can read it too they're and they're like, "Well, saying, hang on a second. Yeah. You think you're just going to come you in here?" You just arrived and... here yesterday. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so it's it's they're not getting their nose out of joint with him, but they're just noticing it. Yeah. You know, and they're starting to go, "Well, okay. Is it is my position up for you know up for offer here? Like, Where's your starting, place in the pack? Yeah. Like, because I think that um, you know holidays holiday dogs come and go. And but they but the holiday dogs don't behave like oh I live here. They they make the most of their Bandit. time here. Well, <laughs> but he's got a position in the pack that totally the does. dogs totally respect. Yeah, so. but, but they come up here. They're excited. They play the games. They yeah. get involved. They you know they sleep with them. Yeah, but. They also don't have that attitude of yeah. I don't live uh, here. My, my yeah. I got my family at home. Yeah. I'm up here for fun exactly. and yeah. And Whereas so Rovers, them, Rover, Rovers come in and gone. Oh, it's coming to bed. Move over. I'll lie in this bed with you. Yeah. I'm hey not sister. Yeah. <laughs> hey it's brother. Like, it's like a, it's like a even or, Kitty Rose. An awkward friend that you. He's totally adopted Kitty Rose. You know. <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah. But it's just an interesting one, isn't it? Because it has affected them. It has. Because uh, we haven't really seen that before this quickly from any of the dogs. No, no. Nah. It usually takes some time. Mm. Um, but he's he's just kind of pushed his way in. Yeah, he totally has. Like happily, yeah. you know, with a big smile on his face. Yeah. You could, you could uh, kind of... Yeah, he totally... Nope. Drop. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Yeah, Fredo chasing him. <laughs> oh, Fredo, what's wrong, mate? Oh no, what happened? Lifting his leg. Oh, gee. Oh, goodness, I really hope he's okay. He seems alright. Yeah, he must have just stood on something. A yeah. Stick or a twig a or, stick something. or something. I have to check his pad. Um, yeah, so Rover has influenced the pack. Chances influence the pack. Um, so what does it look like? So it's safer chance. Like how is he affecting the pack? I mean, obviously a dog like Rosie, she's not relaxing. It used to be that she had those periods of time or those safe places, you yeah. know, to relax. And now it seems it's only yeah. when she comes inside at night. Yeah. He's always there now. He's just, he's just there all the time. Yeah. It's as if you were. You might want to delete this. I don't know, but I'll say it. It's uh, as if you. Try were, not. Try not to use stuff that I'm going to delete. Try I'm to think saying, of a different I'm way. I'm just saying this is what it's like. You know, you might be having a lovely picnic with a few friends, and then all of a sudden, a gangster rocks up and puts out a picnic next to you. I'm enjoying this picnic as much anymore. <laughs> you know? Maybe, uh, maybe we'll move our picnic over here. Okay, let's talk more seriously about that one with Rosie. So, so Rosie just... But she, it's not just Rosie. Yeah, yeah. So, talk about the pack. Because um, Rosie definitely... We already all know that um, Rosie doesn't trust that guy. Yeah. But now that he is... Um, he's all, almost always there and um, seemingly unsupervised, I guess, you know, like as in he's he's able to wander off and explore and yeah. it, I think, the pack I think that's has... that's what gives him a 
a little bit more freedom is the fact that he just goes and does his own thing. Mm. Now, if he was if he was trying to yeah. inject himself into the pack, we would have to uh, continue to separate him. Because he is quite moments. independent. He is. Um, no, he does check in with us all the time, yeah. doesn't he? You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but he does also like to go off on his own walks, and which is wonderful. Walks, yeah, uh, we love that, yeah. you know. And it and it has made this part, this end part of his journey, um, right now, where he has in just the last week, yeah. you know, been involved almost twenty four seven, a lot easier. Because he doesn't want to get in the thick of it when the ball's thrown. So, you know, like when no, you throw a ball, he, he doesn't try to tossle anyone no, for that, for that toy. He started showing a lot more interest in wanting to play with toys and wanting to get one of the toys. But as soon as there's five other dogs all trying to go for it, he's mm. like, oh, you can have it. Yeah, no, but that these are all good things, yeah, these you know. Are all very good things. And, you know, because Because that's always been a challenge, you know. Um, with dogs like Roscoe and Fredo yeah. and, you know, they get to that certain point and then all of a sudden they're in Nevea, they're competing yeah. with the rest of the pack for a toy. Yeah. And so then and the training has to be focused, you know. It starts to run the risk of getting serious again. Yeah. But it feels like for Chance that um, he's just... He's like, cool. Yeah. I'll just living a happy, peaceful life, yeah, you know. Yeah doing whatever he wants you know he sits and just watches or you know um but what it does mean for the pack is that um like we've noticed we watch them and sometimes they look like they're a bit on edge yeah there's uh there's been a few moments because i watch even though i'm inside having a coffee or getting their kids breakfast or whatever i'm always watching yeah. What the dogs are doing. Because they hang around the house. If, yeah. if we're, if they are outside and we're inside, they're in the house yard. And they're just but they generally the are just, just you know. But I do see um, Chance and Roscoe have a little bit of a weird stance yeah. as they go past. I recorded you know. that yesterday, oh, so uh, um, I can, you they'll can see always, that. If your shepherds are lying at the front door in the sun, You'll hear a little growl and like, oh, Chance must be coming around the corner. You know, then Chance just wanders past. Um, the the dogs that... There's a, quite a few dogs that don't care and not affected by it. Like Fredo. Couldn't oh, care less. Fredo, Lily. Yeah. Joey. Um, yeah, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't give two hoots. But, yeah, just his presence does affect some of the other dogs. Like the dogs will be playing, Matilda and Rosie will be playing with the snappy sisters, but then the play will stop if Chance yeah. comes around because Rosie will stop and growl and they'll all go, what are you growling at? And they'll stare. They just oh, stand there Chance. and stare, yeah, yeah. So the game stops as they go past, you know. So no one so is being their natural relaxed self yeah. um, like I guess they used to be. And le- when you're here, though, it's a diff- like, really different different story. So yeah. it... So I guess what we're we're pointing out is those those short times that you're in the house making a coffee or breakfast in the morning or whatever. The dogs are outside. This is the first time that the pack has had chance involved in those moments. Yeah, those and whilst you're ones, yeah. still watching him, um, they don't know that. No. Um, the pack, and um, so they're feeling that uneasiness, aren't they? They are. They're feeling a little bit vulnerable. Yeah. This guy's mm. out Cause here. And you're themselves. not there to guide. You, even they, they don't, even don't think. Even they don't know that... I'm watching through the window of yeah. the kitchen and, and watching the whole thing. But, yeah. But it's good because I get to see an honest reaction from it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because it was good the other day with Roscoe. He found himself in that standoff. But then Roscoe, you know, knew that he didn't want to didn't want to get into that. And so just backed out. So that was a really good response from Roscoe. Yeah. 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 So, you know, he's doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, So, so do we need to go back to Rover? I'm not sure. 
I think the only ones that seem to be a little annoyed by his, um, uh, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not saying we're adopting this dog because everyone jumps to those conclusions. Hey, oh. cut it out. What was it? No. She oh. can't hear me. No. It's because he's licked her too much. Yeah, no, She's annoyed. Yeah. And what is he doing? Well, he's just standing there. But, Stiff. Yeah. Like, you're growling at me. Yeah, but he's that type of dog that will just stand there and, you know. It might not, become not, something. Not so that was Maggie and Chance. Yep. Um, so just back on Rover. Nope. Drop. Good boy. Um... So he comes in here with this attitude of. Yeah, Is that not a dog that just thinks he's in I have position? to zoom in, hang on. <laughs> so nothing to do with pack dynamics, but just on diesel in yeah. terms of, um, <clears throat> you know, how we're approaching um, like his time here at the farm. Mm -hmm. Um. So, like, obviously, first up, oh, I don't know why my phone does this, I'm sorry. It's like, focuses on something else and will not come out of that oh, yeah. focus. Um, so, firstly, he has an appointment with the vet next week, I think. Yes. And that is just to... Um, just to check to see. Just a general check. Is up. there is there something in his behaviour that they may refer us to a specialist? Um, we don't know, but because we need to eliminate that first, don't we? Mm -hmm. You know, he definitely has Chance. some. Come on, mate. Hey, good boy. Some behavioural things going on, but it very yeah. much could be related to something, whether it be pain. Yeah, or... who knows? We'll, we'll we'll get him checked out and have a look. Uh, yeah. May go to a specialist to have a look further, but um, so we need to work that out first. Yeah. Um, and I guess, uh, like him engaging with us and the pack, like we're not focused, we're not trying to force him into you know, at the moment, we're just so long as he's not having any negative um, interactions. Mm. Um, we're very happy for him to just continue doing what he's doing, doing what he wants yeah. to do, and that is simply chase birds all day long. Yeah, from the moment he gets up to the moment he goes to yep. sleep. Yeah, and there's no shortage of birds here to chase, so he's just constantly on the move. Mm. So once we know a little bit more, like health yeah, we'll, wise, uh, we'll be able to work out where to go from there. Yeah. But yeah, at this stage, but there's no rush. There's no pressure, you know. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that, you know, in in terms of yeah, as far as as far diesel. as um, we're concerned with Diesel, you know, D was full. She couldn't house him. He had been D had been given a ridiculous timeline of, you know, what was it, the end of the day to find a place for him, or they're gonna have to put him to sleep and. To, yeah. Just because he had on file, you know, the yeah, attack yeah, incident. Yeah, an incident so. And um, you know, that's as far and as in that in that environment, he was yeah. showing, you know, um, yeah, which he did. And you can no, see in that he, video, he was definitely he was... showing aggression and and whatnot. But you know, we worked with him, saw that oh, we could probably fix this. We come here, let him decompress, and there's no time frame or, or urgency to try to achieve anything with him. Let no. him have fun. Let him, Make sure let that he's not in pain. Yeah. If there's anything that we can help him with, um, like medically or yeah. health wise, like then you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. But yeah, and and I mean, hopefully down the track, he's gonna Na naturally he will start to gravitate towards the dogs and and myself and create relationships randomly through the day. Like he'll come up. I'll, mm. I'll know it's him because he plants his nose on my foot and then runs it up my leg. I'm like, oh, that must be Diesel. Sure enough, look down, there he is, and he's looking up going, you know, want some affection, but then he'll sprint off halfway through the pat chasing a bird. Mm. So naturally, he will start to develop relationships with these guys, but at the, at the minute, he's sitting there going, there's 15 swallows flying around that tree. 
no time to talk to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. That's what yeah. he wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, mate. And he also likes to swim in the dam. Yeah, doesn't he? So... Not so much a pool. He was in the pool the other day, but didn't want to get in. He wasn't interested in that, no. Oh, Mr. Fredo boy. Oh, Mr. Whisker. Oh, not the chin. Oh, no. Oh, hi. Oh, oh boo. Hello, Rover. Hello, Rover. Oh, is that right, Mr. Whisker? Is that right? Ah, ah, ah. No. Hello. Yeah. So that's Rover to Chance. Yeah. So he he's obviously not of the same level of um, understanding. No, no, no. Sorry. Um, same level as Rosie. You know, in terms of having such um, you know, I don't like you. Um, but Rover still after remember. Chance and Rover used to play. They remember that first time yeah. they had that interaction, but then they had an altercation that we did tell everybody about. So I think Chance storm like bulldozed through um, and maybe knocked Rover over, and Rover re reacted. And then Chance, you know, because he at that time he wasn't great with rea yeah. um, reactions. So Rover still isn't a big fan of Chance. So that's probably the only one he's not best friends with. This is the way Roscoe likes to play with me now. I played rough with him. And so he, he learned that we can play fight. He's like, that's fight. <laughs> He does it all the time. He loves it now. Like, this is what I want to do. I want to play like this. So Chance is looking quite interested no. there. Yeah, I was watching him, don't worry. <laughs> so people at home are going to think that, well, maybe Chance thought that you are in trouble. So, um, dogs are really intelligent and they really do understand, you know, they, they rarely misunderstand, um, Scenarios. other dogs behavior. Yeah. So, um, yeah. that was more of a situation of Roscoe's vulnerable. Yeah. And hey, it's not a bite, but it's a. It's no, but usually. I could see the posture. He was focusing on that's Roscoe's right. weak points underneath the back here. He's focusing on that. He's like, oh, it's just there. <laughs> he keeps jumping up and exposing his belly. He's like, yeah. Oh, it's just there. <laughs> and he didn't went didn't go to bite him then. No. But he went to put a paw over his back. Yeah. As if to go for a mount. Yeah. Which is great for him in the fact that he doesn't just go straight for kill. <laughs> you know, but yeah. he's still got a um, tougher than you. Yeah. Attitude. Yeah. Which is good. He's just trying different things. Yeah. But, you know, that's why straight away, as soon as the paw went up, I said no. He straight away went into a sit. Perfect. No yeah. yeah. But it is where people do, um, they misread the intentions of dogs. I think that's yeah. always been a big one for us, hasn't it? Like, um, you know, sometimes it can be difficult for owners to... Uh, massively, yeah. Read and, the and, intentions. And I suppose that's the whole thing. And that thing. can then really change the course of that dog's behaviour yeah, if you're misunderstanding. If you're it. acting in a way that wasn't anything to do with what the real yeah. agenda was. But that's, I suppose, part of this whole thing here is us being hyper vigilant of all the different dogs' personality traits and. Uh, interactions with each other and the complex dynamics within the pack that's what helps us help the dogs yeah because we understand what's going on and you know we can see the little relationships happening mm. we can see them uh, the little relationships changing we can see you know what's happening and, and, and understand how that's going to change everything else it's like a butterfly effect mm. so yeah, but you're right, in the training world, 
one of the biggest things is someone coming to you and saying, oh, my dog does this, I'm not sure how to stop it, blah, blah, blah. And then you go in and look at it and go, well, actually, your dog's doing something completely different to what you think it's actually doing this. And then they're like, oh, okay, that makes total sense. And then as soon as you change something, it, it, it fixes it. But yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. That is a common thing. It's one of my things I tell to all dog trainers who have ever you know, wanted to come and whatever. I always tell them that no matter what the owner says in their brief of this is what you're going into. So let's say, for example, the owner says, oh, my dog pulls on the leash. I've got to stop my dog pulling on a leash. When you go out there, you need to assess for yourself what is going on with that dog because it may not be your dog's pulling on the lead. It may be this dog feels it needs to protect its owner and so therefore they're at the front of the lead being the first line of defense for the owner. It's like that's a totally different way of training. The simple exercise of pulling on the lead is a different way that you would train that rather than this dog is actually showing protective instincts. So then there's a whole range of other things you need to do. So that was always my advice. Don't, don't just listen to the owner and say this is the problem I want to fix this that's not usually the case mm -hmm. yep um, it's like me when I go to the mechanic I can hear it ticking I think there's, it must be this <laughs> the mechanic's like listen to this bozo he doesn't know what he's talking about not that we think anyone's a bozo no that's what the mechanics think of me oh that's goodness what, I, was, I know I was, but I didn't I want it to be if like, people were taking that as the analogy no. Um, I do it to Russell all the time with the bus. I know nothing about buses. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be this Russell. He, he, he just looks at me and goes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's funny. <clears throat> Russell is um, our neighbour slash Betty. Um, Betty the Dash. Everyone will know. Yeah. Or, or, our avid followers yeah. will know Betty the Mini Dash Betty, Down and Betty Coco. And, Coco. Yeah. and I think they've got a new little they one do, now. And she's so cute. I can't remember what's her name. A little blonde uh, long, long hair. hair called Lizzie. Lizzie. Na named after Elizabeth II. Oh, so three Mini yeah. Dash Downs. Just lives down the road, Russell. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's also our bus he's, mechanic. He's our bus mechanic as well, yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, she's so cute. You should see her, babe. Yeah. Cuties. Yeah. She's starting to be a little bit more confident. She's very, very nervous when I laugh. Shy. Shy, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, she's starting to be a lot more confident now. But Coco, totally ball crazy. Mm. Loves chasing balls. Yeah. And uh, Betty just wants to run interference all the time. <laughs> you know, just on um, back on pack dynamics, maybe just Lily. Like, I know. We've kind of just in this conversation, we've put her in the likes of like Fredo, Roscoe, and um, like Chance, you know. And we've also just talked about her being, you know, your right hand gal. Like she's an in the enforcer when someone's told off, um, just like Roscoe. Mm -hmm. Can I just say, and it might be, um, might have been hard to notice, maybe it's been a slow movement. But she didn't used to be in that no. spot. So she's only just moved into that um, position. So she was more the Joey, um, you know. She was, she was quite nervous. Yeah. She was quite, um, she lacked confidence. She mm. was unsure of herself. She was unsure of the pack. She was a little bit like Hope in the fact that, you know, she would really fear getting in trouble as in marking behavior saying no don't do that mm. um yeah she she's come a long way she's coming a yeah really i long just way. wanted to point that out because um she she really is up there with um oh. freddo and roscoe mm. and, um yeah because till till's right up there you know right yeah. at the very top but she's retired she's like the matriarch. yeah she just look at look, 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 look. Oh, she just was sniffing that heel just like uh, she, yeah. yeah she's like mm, back in my younger days because she does she does that to lily yeah <laughs> um 
but she does take um, a, a more uh, observer um, role. Tilly, does? Tilly yeah. now, because she's older and yeah. She... You only you only hear anything out of Tilly if she accidentally gets stepped on or something. Yeah, that's it, really. Um, and to be honest, she she just wants to be inside. Um, yeah. Most of the time, so that's what we we allow her to do whatever she wants. Um, unless you, is that unless pizza is it? Oh yeah. Unless you arrive home, and then she'll run out and sacrifice, sacrifice a, a goat. goat. Yeah, she gets excited about that. Um, but just quickly, I feel <laughs> like Lily is now moving into that role, just like Riker. You know, oh, yeah. like that real, um, very very true German Shepherd. Um, roll. Good day, mate. Yeah, just drive through that next gate and we'll meet you there. Thanks. Bye. Does that make sense? Yeah, just you remember? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Who is who? Lily. You know, yeah, she with... reminds me of Riker oh, yeah, now yeah, yeah. in yeah. her behaviour. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so Lily, Luke. Yeah, Lily. Just lastly. Okay. Um, because we didn't mention it in the bulk of those, you know, um, pack. Gonna stand in the shade. Pack, sh you know, dynamic shifts and yeah. whatever. Uh -huh. Um. So you're saying that, um. <clears throat> It feels like um, she is letting go of that anxiety. Yeah, yeah. She's she's dropping it all and you know being herself, being confident, being um, you know comfort in, comfort in the fact that she's a permanent member. You know? She's letting go of all those issues that she, she had coming in and being the best version of herself, which is pretty cool. No. Mm. So she, like I just said before, she reminds me of Riker when he used to come to the farm mm. for daycare or, um, you know, for holidays. Yeah. Um, where, you know, always by your side. And I remember we did a video on Riker and how um, he really took his job seriously of looking after the kids and no but you like he was remember he was yeah. kind of the one that also vocally would tell the ones that were not behaving themselves yeah, to, to pull their heads in yeah. you know which is what Lily's doing yeah more so these days ah, more and more it started it started off um, if you remember back when mm. Chance I first do. came out yeah. and she told Chance off. And I was like, oh, no, don't do that. Yeah, and you told her off because um, she, she wasn't a dog that could right. handle it back then. She wasn't that confident dog that she is now. She, she, Well, that probably was the turning point or start of where we started to notice that she's changing. She's mm. coming out of her shell. She's starting to be that confident dog. Um, because initially, yeah, that was a... It was a test move for her. She mm. hadn't done that before. Mm. And she decided, oh, I'm going to trial something like this. Uh, but then naturally she started to come into herself. And that that's become a bit more of who she is now. Mm. It was also a situation where... Um, Chance was not ready to be told off by anyone. No, and so you had to tell her, yeah. back down, Lily. Like, I have, I've got down. this, you yeah. know. Whereas... Different scenario now, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't it, mate? Mm, but it's all good for Lily, isn't yeah, it? Lily, yeah. You know, yeah. She's she does seem very happy. Yeah. Unless she's missing out on something, <laughs> like if she's in a hydro bath and I'm on a motorbike. <laughs> she's not a fan of that. No. 
I think you'd have to get in the bathtub with her. Even if uh, we we give her some forced rest and she's inside and I go out on the motorbike, she's at the door. Mm. Yeah. I find the only way I can, like if you have to go out, you know, and get dog food or whatever, um, I have to make sure she comes in the house before you leave. Yeah. Because if you've She'll left... Wait, wait at the gate for me. Yeah, she has to hold a post. Yeah. I noticed that it was a very determined and loyal wait when... I must have only been gone an hour, but it hammered rain. Oh, goodness, yeah. She, she rain, hail, or, or shine. She, she sat she, there in she, the rain. No dog was at the gate. No way. He was just asleep on the driveway at the gate, and I open the gate, and it's hammering down rain. She just wakes up and goes, oh, gate's open? Oh, it looks back. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Yeah. She's a very loyal very dog. Loyal. Very, very loyal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I noticed then, I was like, oh, she's... This is a good quality for her, of hers, you know? Yeah, like she's really... big time. Every, everyone else <laughs> dropped me like a hot potato. <laughs> oh, it's raining. Let's go inside. <laughs> uh, yeah. And no, Lily does not even contemplate, nah. you know, a more comfortable And, and you can even, like you say, you can point. call her back. Yeah. I mean, if I get real stern, I gotta say she will come back to me because she knows I'm commanding her to yeah, but to if come it's, back. But, if but it's not one of those commands. If it's just like Lily, what are you doing? Yeah, she doesn't like, look at me as if um, oh yeah, okay, I'll come and hang with mum, and no. you know, it's like I'm on duty. Yeah, got jobs on. Yeah. All right. Well. Hopefully that um, talks Brings about... everyone up to date with the latest pack dynamic shift. Mm. And so everyone comes along that journey with us. So there's a few things to get your head around. So there's changes in just in, in the last couple of months. Yeah. There's changes in just the last week. I'm expecting to see some more changes in the coming probably three months. Like very soon I'm expecting more changes. Mm. I'm expecting them from Tank and Chopper. I'm expecting them from, um, you know... The Barney and the Barney and the Roscoe, Barney and Freddo. Um, there's a pay dispute between the sheriffs. You know, where it's like, I need more. You're still a trainee, but I want a pay rise. You know, that's all that going on. No one wants deputy before their no title. Nobody. No. Oh, you need to come back and change batteries in the radio. It's a crap job, I get that job every day. <laughs> You're a bounty boy. <laughs> he loves his life. He loves the drama. Oh, thrives on he it. He lives on it. Yeah. Each day he wakes up. Today's the day. <laughs> Today's the <laughs> he's like he lives in a in a yeah. in a TV sitcom, you know, totally like he's is. acting out the yeah. role. <laughs> and your buddy boy, <laughs> oh yes, beautiful boy. Hi right, guys. Hey, Peter. Good boy, Benjo. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Yeah, you stay out of it. This behaviour that Lily has with about the stick, yeah. it's very much the same as Joey with you. Yeah. It's a personal game. Yeah. It's not a game that no, she has no with anybody else. else. No, nobody else is allowed to play. Yeah. No other dog and no other human. Yeah. Like it's just between you two. Yeah. <laughs> Got a whip of the new paddock. Oh yeah, they're fertilising somewhere else now. Oh, it's just the wind. Is it? No, but it's on another paddock, isn't it? It's further down where it's Yeah, yellow. yeah.
Diesel! Diesel, come on, mate. 